Nichiren Buddhism, the chronicles of persecution endured by its founder, Nichiren Daishonin, stand as a testament to the unwavering resolve and profound conviction that guided his mission. Nichiren's defiant stance against the prevailing religious establishment of his time, coupled with his uncompromising propagation of the Lotus Sutra, ignited a firestorm of opposition and subjected him to relentless trials and tribulations. As Nichiren himself declared, since hatred and jealousy abound even during the lifetime of the Buddha, how much worse will it be in the world after his passing? Indeed, the persecutions he faced were foretold in the very teachings he upheld, for the Lotus Sutra warns of the hostility that would befall its votaries in the latter day of the law. Nichiren's tribulations mirrored those endured by Shakyamuni Buddha himself, who, as the sutra recounts, suffered innumerable persecutions. For ninety days he was forced to eat horse fodder. A huge boulder was dropped on him, and though it missed him, his foot was injured and bled. Such trials were not merely confined to the Buddha's lifetime but extended into the centuries after his passing, as Nichiren observed, in the more than two thousand years, after his passing, no one, not even Nagarjuna, Vasubandhu, Tayante or Dengyo, encountered any of the still greater persecutions predicted to occur. Yet, Nichiren's unwavering conviction in the Lotus Sutra's validity propelled him to endure the very persecutions that his predecessors had been spared. Had it not been for the advent of Nichiren in the latter day of the law, the Buddha would have been a great liar and the testimony given by Taho and all the other Buddhas would have been false, he declared. Nichiren's remarkable fortitude in the face of adversity was not merely a personal trial but a fulfillment of the Buddha's prophecy, validating the Lotus Sutra's teachings for the sake of all humanity. The chronicle of Nichiren's persecutions is a harrowing tale of exile, assassination attempts, and the execution of his disciples. In the first year of Kocho, 1261, he was exiled to the province of Izu, and three years later, on the eleventh day of the eleventh month in the first year of Bunei, 1264, he was wounded on the forehead and had his left hand broken. The gravest threat to his life came on the twelfth day of the ninth month of the eighth year of Bunei, 1271, when he was to be executed but was instead exiled to the province of Sado. Nichiren's steadfast determination in the face of such trials echoes his exhortation to his followers, each of you should summon up the courage of a lion and never succumb to threats from anyone. The lion fears no other beast, nor do its cubs. Slanderers are like howling jackals, but Nichiren's followers are like roaring lions. His unwavering spirit, akin to the king of beasts, instilled in his disciples a profound resolve to uphold their faith, even in the direst of circumstances. As Nichiren's persecutions escalated, he perceived them not merely as personal trials but as harbingers of a greater cosmic retribution, a manifestation of the Buddhist deities fulfilling their vows to protect the votaries of the Lotus Sutra. The deaths of Oda Chikamasa, Nagasaki Tokitsuna and Daishin Bo, for example, who were all thrown from their horses, can be attributed to their treachery against the Lotus Sutra, he declared. Nichiren's persecutions were not isolated incidents but part of a larger cosmic drama, where the forces of karma and divine retribution were at work, punishing those who sought to impede the propagation of the Lotus Sutra. Amid the turmoil and adversity, Nichiren's compassion for his followers shone through, as he cautioned them to be prepared for the worst. Do not expect good times, but take the bad times for granted. His sage advice was not merely a recognition of the trials they faced but a means of fortifying their resilience and stealing their resolve in the face of adversity. Nichiren's steadfast commitment to the Lotus Sutra was not merely a personal quest but a cosmic mission, a fulfillment of the Buddha's prophecy, and a validation of the teachings that would ultimately lead humanity to enlightenment. As he proclaimed, in the 2230 years since the Buddha's death, Nichiren is the only person in the whole world to fulfill the Buddha's prophecy. Nichiren's persecutions were not merely trials to be endured but a testament to the profound truth he upheld a truth that would resonate across generations and inspire countless individuals to embark on the path of Buddhahood. Nichiren's persecutions were not merely physical trials but also spiritual tests that challenged the depths of his conviction and the unwavering nature of his faith. 
As he navigated the treacherous waters of opposition and hostility, he remained resolute, drawing strength from the very teachings he upheld and the cosmic significance of his mission. In the face of adversity, Nichiren sought solace and wisdom in the timeless words of the Lotus Sutra, finding within its profound depths the fortitude to persevere. His profound reverence for the Sutra's teachings is encapsulated in his declaration, if we too should meet such severe trials, we will attain Buddhahood in the future. Our present tribulations are like moxicottery, minor pain necessary to remove greater pain. Nichiren's perspicacity in perceiving the trials he endured as a necessary crucible for attaining enlightenment echoes the wisdom of the Buddha himself, who taught that suffering is an inextricable part of the human condition and that it is through the recognition and transcendence of suffering that one can attain the ultimate liberation of Buddhahood. As the persecutions intensified, Nichiren's resolve only grew stronger, his conviction fortified by the very fires of adversity that threatened to consume him. He implored his followers to strengthen your faith day by day and month after month. Should you slacken even a bit, demons will take advantage. Nichiren recognized that the path to enlightenment was not a fleeting endeavor but a lifelong journey, a continuous cultivation of faith and unwavering determination in the face of the ever-present forces of delusion and negativity. Nichiren's persecutions were not merely personal trials but part of a broader cosmic struggle between the forces of enlightenment and those of ignorance and destruction. As he declared, the Buddhist gods who vowed to protect the votary of the Lotus Sutra, Bantan, Teishaku, the gods of the sun and moon, and the four heavenly kings did little to help Nichiren. But by now they have realized in terror that unless they fulfill the oath they swore before the Buddha, they will fall into the hell of incessant suffering. Nichiren's persecutions were a catalyst for the cosmic forces of protection and retribution to manifest, as the deities who had sworn to safeguard the propagation of the Lotus Sutra were compelled to fulfill their vows lest they face the consequences of their inaction. This cosmic dimension to Nichiren's trials underscored the profound significance of his mission and the far-reaching implications of his perseverance. As Nichiren navigated the treacherous waters of opposition and hostility, he remained steadfast, his vision fixed on the ultimate goal of attaining Buddhahood and ushering in a world of peace and enlightenment. His unwavering spirit and indomitable courage serve as an enduring inspiration to all who seek to walk the path of enlightenment, a reminder that the greatest challenges often yield the most profound rewards. Nichiren's persecutions were not merely historical events but living testaments to the transformative power of faith, the indomitable spirit of the human will, and the cosmic significance of upholding the profound teachings of the Lotus Sutra. Through his trials and tribulations, Nichiren emerged as a beacon of hope and a paragon of perseverance, illuminating the way for countless seekers of truth to follow in his footsteps and embrace the courageous spirit that defined his extraordinary life and mission. As Nichiren's persecutions continued to unfold, he remained resolute in his conviction, drawing strength and guidance from the profound wisdom embodied in the Lotus Sutra. His unwavering faith in the teachings he upheld was not merely a matter of personal belief but a cosmic imperative, a testament to the enduring truth that transcends the vicissitudes of time and circumstance. Amidst the turmoil and adversity, Nichiren's compassion for his followers shone through, as he sought to fortify their resolve and prepare them for the trials that lay ahead. You need not frighten those peasant believers from Atsuhara, but you should encourage them in every way possible, he advised. Nichiren recognized that his mission extended beyond his personal struggles and encompassed the spiritual guidance and nurturing of those who had embraced the teachings of the Lotus Sutra. With a profound understanding of the human condition, Nichiren sought to instill in his followers a resilience that would enable them to confront the harsh realities of life without succumbing to despair. If they complain of hunger, tell them about the hell of starvation. If they grumble that they are cold, tell them of the eight freezing hells. If they say they are frightened, explain to them that a pheasant sighted by a hawk, or a mouse stalked by a cat, is as desperate as they are. Through these vivid analogies, Nichiren aimed to cultivate a perspective that transcended the transient sufferings of the moment and embraced the broader cosmic reality of the human condition. Nichiren's compassion extended beyond mere words of encouragement, 
it manifested in his willingness to confront his own shortcomings and acknowledge the lessons learned from his experiences. In the case of Sami Bo, a disciple whose treachery ultimately led to his downfall, Nichiren reflected, if I had scolded him more strictly, he might have been saved. This self-reflective stance exemplifies Nichiren's humility and his commitment to continually refining his approach, recognizing that even the most profound teachings must be conveyed with wisdom and discernment. As the persecutions intensified, Nichiren's resolve remained unwavering, his faith fortified by the knowledge that he was fulfilling a cosmic mission foretold by the Buddha himself. Even if others are clad in armor and instigate, my disciples should never do the same, he cautioned. Nichiren's commitment to non-violence and the peaceful propagation of the Lotus Sutra's teachings was an integral part of his mission, a stark contrast to the violent opposition he faced. Throughout his trials and tribulations, Nichiren remained steadfast in his conviction, his spirit indomitable in the face of adversity. As he declared with unwavering resolve, with my deep respect, Nichiren, he embodied the very essence of the teachings he upheld, a living embodiment of the courage, wisdom, and compassion that lie at the heart of the Lotus Sutra. Nichiren's persecutions were not merely personal trials but cosmic tests that challenged the depths of his faith and the resilience of his spirit. Through his unwavering commitment to upholding the profound teachings of the Lotus Sutra, he emerged as a beacon of hope and inspiration, illuminating the path for countless seekers of truth to follow in his footsteps and embrace the transformative power of enlightenment.